Colonel Mustard in the library with the revolver. Chances are you've heard or even made an accusation like this at least once. And maybe you've even been right. Clue has been around for more than half a century, and it was invented by this man, Anthony Pratt. This is his daughter. Her name is Marcia Lewis. He invented it during the Second World War. My parents used to describe it as a time of great boredom. They couldn't visit friends or go to restaurants or parties like they used to. Pratt was desperate to find ways to pass the time, so he invented a game, a murder mystery game that would eventually be known as Clue. Here's Jonathan Foster. He literally wrote a book about Clue, which is called Cluedo in the UK. So Cluedo was the very first murder mystery board game. Maybe you played it while you were stuck inside. This game was invented more than 70 years ago on a dining room table, but people around the world still play it today. So I wanted to know, how did Clue go from being a homemade game in a British parlor to a multi-million dollar worldwide classic? Anthony Pratt was a musician before the war. He played piano for the rich on cruise ships and in hotels, and he loved watching the guests play out murder mystery scenarios at their parties. Then the war hit and Pratt started working in a factory. Day after day, he'd go to work making weapons, but he ached for life before the war. There were air raids over Birmingham, which is where they were living. So there were short periods of panic. The rest of the time, a lot of boredom. Pratt remembered the murder mystery games from his years as a musician, and he drew on what had always fascinated him. A sort of murder and detection was something that he was always interested in, but he also loved detective fiction. Agatha Christie was one of the most popular authors at the time. Christie came out with The Body in the Library in 1942, in which Colonel and Mrs. Bantry of Gossington Hall discover a corpse in their library. And Pratt's original sketch of the mansion in the game looks very similar to this sketch of the mansion in Christie's The Mysterious Affair at Styles that came out in 1920. Pratt and his wife Elva together created a game called Murder at their dining room table. My mother was quite artistic, so she designed the board. Pratt made up the rules, the weapons, and the characters. In the beginning, there were more characters, including Mr. Gold, Mr. Brown, Miss Gray, and Mrs. Silver. Colonel Mustard was originally Colonel Yellow. Elva believed the game was something special and encouraged her husband to find a publisher. With the help of his friend, Pratt pitched the game to Waddington's, the premier game manufacturer in Europe at the time. And when he pitched the game, they were like, we love the game, but we need to change the name, right? It's Murder is too scandalous a title uh, for a board game. That's Scott Rogers. He's a board game designer and a professor. Waddington's and Pratt settled on the name Cluedo. It was a mix between Clue and Ludo, which is the word for I play in Latin, and was also the name of another one of Waddington's popular board games at the time. They also made small changes to the weapons and characters. A bomb became the candlestick and a syringe became the lead pipe. The number of characters went from 10 to six. That's also when Colonel Yellow became Colonel Mustard. Yellow was the color of cowardice, and the colonel was a military man. Once the changes were made, the deal was done. By then, it was 1947, but because of post-war shortages, Clue wasn't released in the UK until 1949. Across the Atlantic, US game manufacturer Parker Brothers was also excited about Cluedo, which gave Waddington's an opportunity. Parker said to Waddington's, We'll give you the rights to make Monopoly and sell it in the United Kingdom. If you give us the rights to Cluedo, we can sell it in America. So it was thanks to Cluedo that Waddington's held on to Monopoly for many, many years. Cluedo was also released in the US in 1949, with a couple more changes. Now, the American um, manufacturer it thought it was unseemly to have a reverend involved in a murder, so they just called it Mr. Green. There's always little quirks, and just show you how your culture works. They made another small change. The game became simply Clue. Things took off from there, and Cluedo has been published in at least 40 different countries. Part of the reason the game has been so successful is that it's flexible. It's also been updated several times over the years. Here's Rob Davio, 
He's a game designer who was charged with redesigning Clue when he worked at Hasbro Games in 2008. So I went in with a lot of reverence of what makes Clue Clue. We looked at modernizing it. We removed it from England and put it in sort of a Hollywood mansion and gave it a Hollywood vibe. Colonel Mustard became a former professional football player, Professor Plum became a dot-com billionaire, and Miss Scarlet became a Hollywood actress. Recently, game makers killed off housekeeper Mrs. White and replaced her with a scientist named Dr. Orchid. For the most part, though, the rules of the game have stayed the same. The three variables that uh, make up kind of the heart of Clue, which is who did it, with what, and where. As long as you maintain those, you can reskin it to any type of game that you'd like. To me, the sort of appeal of it, you know, being set in a, an old English country house, that has a charm of its own. Cluedo is one of the most successful board games of all time. Anthony Pratt died in 1994, but he didn't die a millionaire. Just a few years after he sold the game to Waddington's, he signed over all royalties for just 5,000 pounds. I think would be worth the equivalent of about $175,000 today. It seemed like, a, I suppose, a, a reasonably attractive sum of money. I'd just been born, so he probably thought it was a responsible thing to do. But $175,000 doesn't compare to the millions the game has made because of its worldwide success. Even in his town of Birmingham, Anthony Pratt died relatively unknown. I went to find the house in Birmingham. I explained to them that, you know, in the 30s and 40s, a gentleman that lived here invented Cluedo. And I showed him the pattern, it's got that address on, and I got a blue plaque put up. Pratt's anonymity is unusual compared to the inventors of games like Monopoly and Scrabble. I would say Colonel Mustard and Professor Plum and Miss Scarlet are probably some of the most well-known characters in board games. When you think of the millions, billions of dollars that Clue has produced, it's a, it's a real shame. My mother, I think, felt it a little bit more than my dad. And I think she thought that they'd been, I suppose, cheated a little bit. But my father was philosophical about it. In the end, they were just pleased that it was such a success. I mean, I'm very proud that he's left such a, a mark on the world. Pratt's characters are so well known, there's a movie made about them in 1985. The movie clue didn't do well in the box office, but it's since become a cult classic. Was it one of her clients? Or was it a jealous wife? Or an adulterous doctor? No. It was her employer, Miss Scarlet. There have also been video games, off-Broadway plays, and short-lived TV game shows. I think they'd be absolutely amazed at how it's spawned so many different themes, and <laughs> it's mind-boggling, really. Everyone I talked to said that one of the biggest reasons Clue was so successful was that it was the first game that really told a story. Like Dungeons and Dragons that became popular in the 1970s, Clue gave everyone a chance to be part of the mystery. It allows you to step inside the mansion, become a character, and really figure out who done it. There's even a detective pad and teeny tiny weapons. I mean, as a child, I used to find those fascinating. They're, they're almost like toys, and you, you wonder about the characters and appearance of the people represented by these playing pieces. So I think it does appeal to the imagination as well. It is really quite timeless. So now, if you're ever asked who invented Clue, you could say Anthony Pratt in the dining room with his wife and absolutely nothing to do. Thanks so much for watching. We had a ton of fun making the video, learning about the history of Clue, meeting the inventor's daughter. If you had as much fun as we did, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps to build our channel.